give you a special offer. Like this guy I'm going to make an offer you can't do anyway. He's going to tell you about a special offer, all right? So I introduce you to Eric Moore. Thank you. You know, I have been with the, working on this issue for about you know, 12, 13, 14 years, something like that. Uh, just to give you a little background on myself, my name is Eric Moore. I grew up on 3rd Avenue and 42nd Street, so I'm from this community. This is, this is home. And uh, about the 1998 time frame, uh, unfortunately, my mother passed away. And I decided to move my family back into the family home there on 3rd and 42nd Street, enrolled by son in Crenshaw High School. And uh, that was my eldest. They are six years apart. My youngest, uh, uh, well, actually, that's not important, but I was enrolled by son in Crenshaw High School. Got there, and I knew he was you know, going through some drama because my mom had passed. But his first report card is one of those life changing situations. So I was a financial advisor with American Express. So my job was helping families with their finances and their retirement and all those things. Uh, but I took the time off and decided to go up to Crenshaw and figure out, you know, what was going on and how I could help him and how I could be more involved. Uh, that, at that time, in 1998, I learned that Crenshaw had 2,300 students and three counselors. Okay. So once again, 2,300 students. See the little background. I, once again, I grew up on that over there, but I didn't go to Crenshaw on a lot. Uh, that's when they were busing all the kids when they first got started with busing. So I, instead of going to Audubon, they sent me to what's now called Oasis, Brother Bird Oasis. So before it was called Oasis, I was in that class. It was called CBS at that time. Studies. But yeah, I was in the first class. And then after that, I was on the bus stop of Transfigure, riding to Birmingham for high school, so a couple hours because they had to pick up kids and so forth. So my, my job, my, my commute was a couple hours every morning both ways. Plus I played football, so I came home at like 8, 8.30. So mom always complained, man, they should've just put all those millions that they spent busting the kids around into Crenshaw. So fast forward you know, to my son going to Crenshaw, and I learned that there's three, three you know, councils where there's 2,300 kids. And I'm upset until I do some research and learn at that time there was 945 students per counselor in the state. 941, five, okay. So it's, it's gotten better. It's around 520, 540, something like that now. But that started me, exactly still, but that started me on the, on the, uh, on the mission. So I went there, I went to, to, to crunch up like three or four days straight. And met a new teacher, counselor, everything, volunteered for the, the parent councils and all those different things. But I started to see a change in my son. And I also started talking to him about his learning styles and how we can help him and so forth. And I found out that he was a very kinesthetic kid, meaning that he's very experimental, wants to move and that type of thing, which most of our kids are. So I decided that I wanted to start a small nonprofit uh, at the time that you get LA. And the focus was parent engagement. That's really all I wanted to do was to help families who wanted to be more involved. Because I had done this enormous amount of research. And in part of the research, the book that you guys just received was one of the things I found. Okay. It was in a different format, a little bit different, but it was created. Uh, well, at that time, I didn't even know this, but I got it from the Los Angeles County Office of Education. So that's the group that manages all the districts in LA County, all 80 of them. Okay. So I got it from them. And that book was just like phenomenal to me. So I started looking through it and I started buying a couple because I wanted to do a couple of workshops and I did more workshops and more workshops and they finally called me and say, hey, you know, normally these are bought by schools and school districts like a, a thousand at a time. Why are you buying 10, 20? And I, I told them what I was doing and say, hey, man, that's a great idea. So we used to sit on our board of directors or board of advisors. So they asked me to do that. I did that for eight years. And that's when I learned that that book was created in the 70s by the lead counselors of San Mateo County because the lead counselor heard his counselor saying different things on, about, on the basic subjects of you know, counseling too. So he created a professional development guide that originally was meant to give to all the counselors and all the educators so that they properly advise the families. Okay. Then they started just passing them on to kids. And they handed them out before I learned about it to five million kids. Just like, so this is not something I created. But after sitting on the board for eight years, 
they retired. All my folks retired and they asked me to get them. So my organization, or actually I personally, purchased the right to this. And I own a for profit company that sells to schools. I own a nonprofit organization called Educate California that works with churches, schools, uh, nonprofits, and so forth. And we come out and do free trainings. And we have a, a contract with the Cal States to come out and work with the events. So, what you have in front of you is a Bible that's been used for 40 plus years. To, and it's the best thing I have to say. So, what's happened now is that we've taken that printed guide, and because of COVID, we were forced to take it and put it online. So that's what we're going to take a look at today, because it's all online. And the online version is that on steroids. Okay. So you can read through this, and it's great. But online, what I did is, when I was trying to help my son, I found hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, actually thousands of thousands, of websites that can explain all the things that we need to go through. So in the narrative of that, of that book, which is online, I've woken in websites that you can go to. So instead of just talking about maps, so there's the click of the maps of website, or E through G, or GPA calculators, or all these different things. So that's what the Library of Academy is, and you guys are going to receive a copy of this for a full year from your students. Okay. That was the offer I think that Nathan was talking about. So that is taken care of. You're going to receive that. And as a matter of fact, as long as your students are part of the EEP program, they're going to continue to receive it. So hopefully, if you know, I'm not sure where your students are starting at, but the goal of the entire Life of Academy is to be a parent engagement program that helps you understand everything you need to know from middle school all the way into college. We work with students from 14 to 24. Okay, so we're going to talk about a little bit about middle school, we're going to talk about high school, we're going to talk about after high school, but I'm going to walk you guys through it, and hopefully you guys you can see everything that we're going to be talking about up here, and if not, once again, come on forward, let's not be shy, because Nikki told me you guys are family, like I said, and, and so I'm going to talk to you like family, I'm be real, so come on up here so you can see, if you can't see it close enough, don't, don't be shy, like I said, you're all family. Okay, good, very good. Okay, so let's get started. So, um, I think actually I've been talking too long, so we we'll probably have to go back to the home page. Let's click here. Okay. Okay. So how do we even get started? You know, I've actually signed in already. Okay. So I'm going to sign out so you can see the entire process here. Okay. So when you get to LifeCurveAcademy.com, oh, oh, before I get started, I'm sorry. Two things. Um, one, one is um, hopefully you guys have pens and so far. So we have ways to take notes in those in that book. So you can info or someone if you can make sure that the people have a way to write notes if you want them to look. This is our last year producing the book, so we will not be producing them going forward. So you guys can take a note of that. So keep that book, okay? It may be worth something at one point. <laughs> the other thing is that I gave you a sheet that gives you a barcode or a QR code or a website. That is how I am able to track if you are learning something today. That's our survey. It's online, and you can scan that QR code. It'll take you directly to a Google Forms survey, and that has basic like five questions about how much you understand about the G, how much you understand about these different things. So I would really, really, really appreciate that if you would go to that, scan that code, or go to that website while we're, while we're going through the presentation. So there's a pre-survey and a post-survey. Okay. So if you'll fill that out that way, I am able to let the CSU know that what you guys are learning is making sense today and that it's helping you. And also, it, there's a link at the bottom that says, uh, send me a copy of my results. So you know how much you learned from today, okay? So please take a moment to do that with pre post survey. Okay, so once again, the website itself is microacademy.org. When you go there, you're going to click on the students and parents tab. It's going to click you to a sign in button here. Uh, just to tell you quickly, these two buttons at the top, Schoology and Clever, are what they call single sign-on. You won't be using this unless you use these through your schools. So these are what they call single sign-ons. Nowadays, schools have so many apps and websites that they want their students to use that they don't want them to have to create uh, logins and passwords and usernames for all of them and have to change them and so forth. So these two, Schoology and Clever, are the two best in the entire country, and we are part of their, uh, part of their program where schools are able to sign in through that without having to create any passwords for the students. In your case, you guys are going to come to the username and I will put mine in here. One second. Okay. 
Okay. And when you, when you sign in, it takes you to the dashboard. So the dashboard is where everybody gets started. This is where everything gets started. As a matter of fact, on every page, there's a link back to the dashboard. This is where you want to get started. So let me tell you what's behind these eight buttons here. The first one, the middle school button, is how to make sure that students that are in middle school are ready for the trans transition to high school. They need to learn, you know, there's no class sizes that are changing. Is there you know, GPA that can calculate? All those different things. So, really getting middle school age parents ready for high school. The second button, getting prepared, is talking about for our ninth and tenth. And some of the little bit about eleventh graders, but that's your diploma. We want you to make sure that you have strong skills. First off, we talk about study skills. We talk about those A through G requirements that are so important. We'll talk about that in a moment. AP courses, you know, the, 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 the different standardized testing is available, and all the resources to make sure that the ninth and tenth graders are on track to get ready for. Their diploma. The third button talks about the journey. That's really for our 10th and 11th graders. That's where we start talking about let's talk and let's take a look at some career assessments. Let's talk about you know what kind of careers are available for you and also what kind of colleges there are. And obviously, there's Cal States, there are UCs, there are HBCUs, there are all these different colleges. So we want to make sure that all the students understand what kind of options they have available to them. And that's once again what's behind button number three. The fourth button, uh, button uh, healthy living, that is for our 11th grader and above. So that's what we're talking to them about. Now you're going to be on your own. You're going to be having to take care of yourself while you're in college. And understanding health and mental health and you know, DEI and all those different types of things, even down to the point of you know, driving safe and just being safe and taking care of their health and understanding how important that is for their success while they're in college. The fifth button down at the bottom, homework health science, that's how I got started. I found all these wonderful websites that were available for my son to do his research and his homework, and I immediately realized that that was helping him. And, was, and we, saw, we actually found a website that talks about the learning styles. I'll show that to you in a minute. But that's where he learned that, wow, okay, so there's, there's auditory, there's visual, and then there's kinesthetic. Once again, that experiential story. And he said, Dad, that's me, wow. And that's how I got started by finding thousands of websites that helped him with English, uh, you know, math, social studies, science, and so forth. So we'll talk about that too, down the road. All those scholarships are in search engines. The best way to pay for college is not have to pay for college. So I have all the best scholarship search engines on the button number six. The, the fifth button, number, button number seven, foster homeless probation, undocumented, and special needs. After I had done the, or taken over the book from Lego, uh, they actually called me again and said, you're doing this so well. We create another book that is for special populations and how to help them get into college. So we created another eight-page guide, and that's all behind button number seven. Okay. Uh, number eight is our surveys, and that's what I gave you is a copy of that QR code. That's where we put our surveys so that people can once again let us know: Are you learning? What should we improve? What can we add to make it more interactive and so forth? So once again, that's very, very, very important. Please take a look at uh, and do those surveys, please. So uh, where do most people get started? Right here is on my quick links. My quick links is basically a table of contents of what's behind those buttons. Okay. I put it like this because I want to make it one, you know, easy for you to get access to different things. But we work with counselors, mentors, and so forth. And I want the literally for you as parents, mentors, counselors to be able to have a student say, hey, I'm thinking about going to the Cal State or HBCU, and you just navigate over, click on a button, and you land on a page that can work with your student. It shouldn't take a long time because you for my kids, their, their attention span is not too long. So I need to be able to get to it very quickly, and that's why we have those quick links. So we want to make sure that you take advantage of all those. I'm just showing you what's behind all those buttons here. So, yeah, that's all the quick links. I'll also show you here on the dashboard. Once again, there will be a button on every one the videos. So when I do my workshops, there's typically we do videos and we can put those videos behind the button. This was what I did for downtown Magnus High School, where we're talking to their African American parents and to this. Also on uh, notes. Inside the notes area, you have the ability to take notes while you're walking through the library academy. So if you find something that's really cool, you can type that in there, hit add note, and it'll list it down there. Let me learn something cool for you. So that you can keep notes as you're going through the library academy. And then lastly, what's the biggest, biggest deal about what we do is this plan right here. So 
A through G requirements. We're going to talk to you about those 15 year long classes. I'm sure the deacon has grown that into you. He's one of the best. I come to him. He's my mentor. That's what you know. Okay. So the deacon, I'm sure, is talking about those A through G requirements, but we want to make sure you understand it so well that here's a way of keeping track of all your students' grades. So you can put in all their grades, their concurrent classes, and so forth. Do that for four years and do that to the senior and make sure that you know know that you know what their GPA is in this way. When you speak to that counselor that's so elusive, you don't have to wonder, so how is my kid doing? That happened to me. I came in, so how is he kid doing? And then afterwards, I felt embarrassed because you know, I should have known. But I should be keeping track of these things. So you keep track of this, and you talk to the counselor, you speak from a, from a strength and a point of knowledge, and you're able to have a very good conversation, conversation with them and make sure that they're on track and you're on track. And then when you do have time with that professional, that's when you ask them, so what are the right options for my day? And when you, of course, when you do that, you get a second option from the dean because once again, he's my mentor and I always would do that anyway. And then on the college, what is your college plan? This is something we don't have students do. What do you want to do? What would you like? So create an actual plan. You can go in here, type in all the information, my major, my minor, the degrees, the colleges I'm looking at, I'm gonna pay for college. You do the same thing for a career, and you add the information in there. You do the same thing for financial. Once again, I work with a lot of 18 to 24 year olds, so we want to let them know when you get that first job, you know, we want to be part of the 401k or 403b. You, you want to get a checking account, and not have those, you know, check cash and services. So we make sure that our elders, still older students, have an actual plan. The reason we do this is twofold. Number one, we want the students to do it. Number two, we want you to know what's in their mind so you can help them get to your goal. And number three, we want their mentor, counselor, folks from the staff here to be able to have a conversation with you on how you as a team can help your child get to where you're going. Does that make sense? Okay, all right. So that's the goal of the plan, all right? So we're gonna go on back to the dashboard because once again, you guys are gonna get a copy of this and I don't have so I'm going to run through this very a little bit quicker than normal, but we're going to start with the high school here. Most of the parents here are all high school, yes. All right, so we're going to go through the high school and just kind of walk through. So what are you going to find inside the, the Life Group Academy? And so in here, we'll start off with things about, and once again, you can walk along with them through your book, okay? Your book has the exact same information, so if you like to, you can walk along with, with me. Just go to the page one where we get started on there, and you can walk along. Once again, all I've done is add all these super links that are in there. So things like study habits. Here is a great site that I found that is helping students understand their study habits and helping you as a parent be more involved. So you're able to go here and download this worksheet and you will go through this. And the way I work with, it, with my students with this, I tell them, look, there are things that you're already doing and that's good, but there are things that you probably are not thought about. So let's look at what plan to do. Go through the entire list. Uh, one thing I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example is, and I just I laugh about this. When I left home today, my wife is doing an assignment uh, for work, you know, a big assignment for work, but she has CNN on, and it's playing at a you know, level where it would be distracting me. She can listen to music. She can, you know, listen to TV and things like that. I don't know how many of you guys can do that have distraction. Me, I need an absolute quiet. <laughs> okay. That's just, you know, a learning style. So there's things like that. You listen to soft music. Some, for some students, that's a good thing. I don't encourage it in groups, though. So, okay. But yes, because they've got to get the same model and things like that. But there are things that you can go through with your students to find out what they're currently doing, some things that they should be doing, and then there's literally some things they should not be doing. Once again, it's not their learning style, so they can check their not interested box, and that's perfectly cool. But at least you understand what their learning style is, and you're able to help them make some decisions on how they can increase their study skills. One, one of my favorites here, and we don't have a huge amount of time, so I'm not going to show this to you, but this guy here, this whole website, College Info Geek, College Info Geek, this guy has videos that talks about almost everything, procrastination, taking notes, and so forth. He is the master at it, and I'll just show you just like two, the, the first one, but he talks about the five book taking skills, and hopefully we'll have the audio and everything, but uh, yeah, I'll just show this to you for a little bit. I'm not going to show you the entire thing, but I just want to show you just one how it goes through. I did the first two actually. So we'll do this real quick and see if it works right. Okay. Uh, 
course, I will be representing these new that? systems with Street Fighter characters. Because, why not? So, the five note taking systems I'm going to go over in this video include the Outline Method, the Cornell Method, the Mind Map Method, the Flow Method, and the Right on the Slides Method. The first note taking system on my list is the Outline Method. I've chosen for you to represent because the Outline Method is straightforward, based on hierarchy, disciplined, and overall very simple. In fact, you couldn't get more simple than the Outline Method unless you were just straight up writing paragraph notes down. And if you think that's going to be a good note taking method, well, things are not going to work out for you. So the outline method is a note taking system that's based on bullet points and hierarchy. Basically, to take outline style notes, you simply create top level bullet points of all the main points in the lecture. Then you make lower level bullet points to fill out all the details. If you're taking outline notes on paper, it's a good idea to either space out your main bullet points or summarize them at the top if your professor goes through them, and then make new bullet points that are more detailed down the line. However, if you're taking notes on a computer like I always did in a program like Evernote or ByWord or another word processor, you can easily go back at new bullet points and format things without having to mess up the structure of your document too much. So honestly, for the outline method, I think using a computer is a perfect approach. The second note-taking method on my list is the Cornell method. And I've chosen Chen Li to represent it because she's got multiple kicks and it's got multiple sections. A lot of schools are teaching I was also taught back in the 1950s and it still holds up pretty well today. When you take your notes in the Cornell style, you divide your paper into three distinct sections. On the top of your paper, you'll have two different columns, the left one being the cue column, and the right one being the note-taking column. And underneath those two columns, you add another box for the summary. During class, you use the note-taking column on the right to write notes in a normal style. However, this is where the Cornell method deviates from other note-taking systems. As soon as you can after class, you write down questions or cues in the cue column. These are meant to help you review later. You also write down a summary of the lecture in the summary column. These two sections of the Cornell method, the summary and the cue column, they're both designed to help you build reviewable notes the first time you write them. That way you don't have to go back and rework your notes so much. Note-taking system number three is the okay. mind map. So you know, stop it's been there. said that your mind is a but You can see what I'm talking about. That's the quality of videos I found, okay? And I want these, it, the reason I found them, the reason I use them is because this is how our kids learn. Right? This is how I learned. Yes? Can you repeat the website again? College Info Geek. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is how I learned. I just did some work on my house and I watched three YouTube videos to make sure I was right. I mean, how many of these people have done that? Okay. So, so this is what, this is how they learn. So we put a lot of resources like this in there. And once again, we don't have as much time as normal, so I'm not sure if we as many, but we talk about how to stay organized, procrastinating learning styles, uh, we talked about on just grade one, you know, time management skills, how to manage the, the amount of extracurricular activities in school and so forth. And then of course, the, the all important parent engagement models. We want to take you guys from participants to be involved in them. And then if you want to go a little crazy like I did, become an ambassador, we welcome that. I, I would love you guys to be like that and do that. But let me just kind of keep going here. Okay, so. Um, on the next page, I have a flyer that's kind of tacky in here. Okay, A through G requirements. Once again, none, I'm sure, how many, can anyone tell me that they do not score you on a score of one to 10, a 10 on A through G requirements? Can anyone say that to me? Good, okay, I just thought so, okay. Those 15 classes they have to take, I always make sure that they do that. One way we make sure that they're on track is to put them into their plan. I always talk about this, though. You say, well, wait a minute, Eric, there's 18 on there. Yes, because the UC, Harvard, all those folks, they want you to take that fourth year, this third year, and so forth. So if you're going for the basics, 15. If you want to go for those larger, 18. Okay, you want to make sure that they take care of all of those with a C or better to make sure that they're on track. What, you want to take a picture of that? Oh, that's it. Go. I just want to say, you guys, we're going to do the video after three days of processing. Only the people here will get the video. You can do what you want with it. <laughs> and uh, it'll have a nice shot of the screen. And he's just introducing you, make sure you're aware of it. This, this is a bomb tool. He, doesn't, he, can, he can show you stuff that you can keep going out of it. Because we do this for three hours, and we'll set up the time where we can do this online so you guys can do it after work. Maybe from 6 to 7 30, we'll set that up. All right. So uh, we can do it now. Concurrent enrollment, how important is that? Extremely important. I have known several students in Deacon. I didn't tell you, the last time I was here, or not the last time, I think the last time. Someone came up to me 
And the gentleman, big guy, I don't remember what his name was, he told me, Dickens, you don't remember me, or you don't remember me, but you told my daughter that if she did the right things, that she could graduate with her high school diploma and her AA at the same time. I think I did. did. Okay, well, I need to meet a uh, doctor. But this man came up to me, and his daughter did all the things I'm talking about concurrent classes. Beautiful thing. They're free. You can take those. If your students pass concurrent class while they're in high school, they have a mastery of that subject. They also don't have to worry about taking that class when they get to college. They pass up the English 101 and math 101. They pass it all up. Their confidence is huge because they know that they know that they know. They're going to do well. And then another thing that gentleman told me says, Gary, she has two years, and you just saved probably $80,000. Especially with the private school. Did anybody hear me when I said that? $80,000 or a year ago. Okay. So concurrent classes. Gives them mastery, gives them confidence, gives you some safety. Okay. So, highly encourage it. Adamant, if you have access to Adamant on your campus, I take it. AP courses that have to get the point ones, point twos, point threes. Okay. Learn the difference between weighted and unweighted. There's a link right here. Weighted is the basic, absolute, you know, normal. The, you know, the unweighted is the A is four, B is three. You know, you can take so many classes that you can be like this young lady, and I'm not saying you need to be, but some people say, what's the highest GPA you can score? Well, this lady, young lady, took 17 AP courses and concurrent classes at the same time, and concurred the highest thing, uh, that earned the highest GPA I've ever seen. I didn't even know it was possible, but she just did that many classes. Her younger brother did like a nine point something too, so they're brain I'm not saying our students need to do that, but I was sure to because, hey, why not be one of us? I would love to see that. Uh, AP and Honors, UC Scout, this is something that's available at some schools, not all schools. And this is, UC Scout is for our free AP courses and A through D courses, makeup courses, online, free. Could you repeat that? Yes. There are some schools that do not have the full cadre and the, uh, the menu of AP courses available for the students to take. The UC system of felt, uh, no, they felt, they were probably heading towards legal issues. <laughs> and so they said, we need to create a way for any student in California who has the initiative and wants to do that to take AP courses online for free. The thing is, it has to be graded by someone on their campus. Typically, some schools do not have that at first. If yours does not, demand it. Feel me? All right, ask for it, yes. The counselor and the principal. The counselor and the principal, you say that, hey, I heard about this UC Scout thing. I want my student to be able to take this. And I heard that you don't have, do you have someone on your campus taking the grade? No, we don't. How do we do that? Feel me? Yeah. All right. Because if you don't, it's not going to happen. But this is the way that gives them that equity we've been talking about. Okay. You see, these are 100% go towards your, your transcripts on UC. So UC Scout, one of my favorite, favorite resources, okay? Let's keep going. How to calculate your GPA. We have a website that can talk to you about that. NCAA, if we have students that want to participate in sports outside of, uh, after high school, they must go to this NCAA eligibility center. This is where they learn the rules. We've had students that didn't know the rules, lost their scholarships. The young man had a brother who was a football star and he was becoming a football star and he wanted to go visit him out of state, travel out of state, Saw him on the football field. One of the young coaches saw him. Thought it would be a good thing to encourage the kids, you know, hey, I want you to come to school like your brother. Hey, you guys hungry? Let's go get a hamburger and swipe his credit card problem. A four dollar hamburger. The only four dollar hamburger can cost those kids all their scholarships. That's true. They need to know the rules, right? They're on the NCAA eligibility center. That's what's on there. Okay, we'll keep going. Um, College entrance exams, as you know, the SAT is not going to be accepted by the Cal State or the UC for now. Probably not ever in the future, do you agree? I agree. Yeah, probably so not. Right. Some schools are still requiring them, so you don't let your daughters know. You need to know. You need to be on top of it. We have some great issues here. What's the best, you know, score you can get on SAT, 1600? You want to be in that 13 area if you were looking to go to an exclusive school, it's probably better. Okay, about the 13, 14, that's how you get into those UCLA's, Harvard's, Yale's, yes? Okay, um, uh, ACT, 36 is the best. You want to be, you know, 30 to 
you want to go to the exclusive schools, where the resources that you can use, Khan Academy, there's some great resources out there, but you just got to be on top of it. So don't let your guard down and think, okay, well, no one's going to be accepting those SATs. If you want your students to go to certain schools, you definitely absolutely want to have that. Okay, common entrance, we keep going. Special needs, I'll just talk about this real quick. Special needs. Uh, I have students that have physical special needs. They walk in, they're on crutches, they're in a wheelchair, we know they have needs, we can make sure that the schools will take care of them. If your student has a need that they don't want to talk about, dyslexia, ADD, something like that, autism. I just had that a few days ago, a few weeks ago, when I was talking to the downtown Magnet High School, and they just said, frankly, I'm scared because I have dyslexia and I don't know how I'm going to handle it. But you have to talk to the department on every campus in California in the interview process to make sure that they have the resources for your baby. Okay? And then make sure that they are ready to do it on their own because after that, you can't come back every week. Those kids are 18 years old, so they get there, there's verbal laws and so forth that prohibit mom and dad from just showing up asking questions. So you empower the baby to advocate on their own. But you make sure that the resources are there for your kids. Do I need to say more? Are we cool with that? All right, that's your job. Make sure you're advocating for the kids. Then we have a link for each year, a planning calendar, the freshman year, the junior year, the senior year, and one senior, we're going to move a little faster. And the senior, I'll just throw one thing up is that uh, if your students come up next year's senior year, mm -hmm. get the down payment on the dorm as early as possible because the schools are impacted. We have way more kids applying than they have seats. Okay? So you need to get your dorm payment down as quickly as possible because most of the people I've talked to, and I'll say about 90 of the people I've talked to, 90% have said that if the student is able to live in the dorms for the first couple of years, typically they do better. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. So I highly encourage that. Get your down payment on your dorms as early as possible. Okay, so financial aid resources. What's the best way to pay for college? I said it earlier. Don't pay for college. No. All right. Once again, I just we found here, you can tell the family, so I'm gonna tell you the truth. I was a 3.5 student. I had a better GPA than my older brother, so I was excited. No one ever told me why I should do 4.0. And it would have been easy for me. I graduated when I got out of high school. My whole last semester was going to work because I had so many credits, but no one ever told me you should be taking concurrent classes. And I didn't get this information though. I didn't have this. No one told me that if I had a 4.0, then my mom wouldn't have to come out of her retirement account to send me to college. Do I have to say that again? We family here, okay? So tell your kids. I was a mama boy. My mom's gone now. Man, if I had known this back then, oh, I would have done anything you done. But tell your kids, don't, don't act like, that. yes, it's wonderful you to pay for college and so forth, but number one, if they have the smarts, then they don't have to pay for college. And number two, if they apply themselves, then they don't have to worry about going into debt long term. Tell them that early, ninth grade, tenth grade, start planning on it. But that's you know, set that in their mind that they shouldn't have to pay for college if they have the smart. They will pay them to come to college because they need them on their campuses. That's how UCLA gets those giant forty million dollar grants is because they're willing to give their kid one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Feel me? Okay, this one. I'm not so financial aid resources. Uh, we have federal grants and loans. We have a page on California grants, and I'll just show you real quickly about this. The Chafee grant. If your child or if another child that you know is in foster care, Chafee grant is a $5,000 annual grant for students in foster care. Chafee grant, okay? If you know someone that, that applies to, please let them know. Because I know a lot of students in particular can tell you that have taken care of their entire community college career and parts of their you know, CSU career by this Chafee grant. So it's a great resource to help them not have to pay for college and to get the work set, you know, set aside for them. Yeah. Okay, avoiding scholarship scams. Long story short, if someone says pay me some money to help you find scholarships, the answer is no. You never pay money to get money. Scholarship essays, when your student's ready to write them, you probably need to understand exactly what a five paragraph essay is. Okay, it's very basic, it's a nice structure for the students. We'll talk about how to write them. These are some, some tips from some folks that just in 2021 were the top learners and were able to get the top scholarships. 3.25 is what I've seen is that really about the GPA where you start unlocking the scholarships. Some a little bit lower, but 3.25 is where we really start seeing the floodgates open for different scholarship options. So that's where you really want to start looking at that. 
And then at the bottom, we have the search engines, general scholarships, and all the different needs and nationalities you know, for everyone here. What I will show you is the top one, the scholarship search engines, and here is where we have the majors, Big Future, CapEx, FastWeb. Uh, by the way, you don't need to sign up for all of these. One, maybe two, because they'll send you a scholarship every day. You, I mean, more than you could ever call uh, one I will tell you about is military.com. If you are in the military and you have children who go to college, the military.com and the U.S. Veterans Magazine at the bottom here, they will help you pay for the college and they'll almost be free. Okay, it's great scholarships for students that are in the military. All right, so let's go back here, keep going. We're going to go a little fast enough. I want to make sure we get through everything. Um, keys to Man, no, actually, this almost ends the time. Because we actually do a whole class. So we do this quick run through, which we call an orientation. Then we have deep dives, which are an hour each for each one of them, for several different subjects. This one is very important because I work with some students uh, that are once again 18 to 24 to manage your money. Students need to know how to manage their money account. Every year I get calls from some of us here, can you help my son or daughter find some scholarships because they use their grant money for something that was not on the budget or they have not learned how to use a budget. Okay, very important. One of my favorite resources here, you can just go to this budget calculator and walk through it with them. How to create a budget. You know, we say, okay, so I have a salary of 35, oops, I have a salary of 35,000. So I have a salary of X amount of dollars. Oh, that's the I'm using. Put in your salary, then you start leaving out your expenses, and that's where it gets scary to the kids. Like it gets scary to me sometimes, okay? But you walk through this with your students so they understand that you have X amount of dollars, it has to last X amount of months or a year or whatever the case may be, and they understand it. And frankly, as a financial advisor, I have parents and I have you know, parents, grandparents, you know, clients that are in their 60s that still didn't get this, okay? And it's very important for you and for them. That they get this whole thing so they understand how to manage their money. We talked to them also on this page about you know putting together a savings plan, you know, with a young compound interest. FINRA, this one right here, FINRA. If you want to know anything about investments at all, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, annuities, anything like that, this is created by the federal government. They have to have a website that tells every consumer in the country how to choose what resources and what kind of investments they make. So FINRA, F-I-N-R-A, okay? That's where you can learn from the government everything you need to know about every investment available in the country, all right? One of my favorite websites on there. And I actually do a whole workshop on this entire thing. Establishing good credit. Credit cards are not bad. Bad use of credit cards is the, the issue. Right. Students need to know how to use that credit card. They need to know that if you you know, take a hundred dollars off that car and let it go for a year, you're gonna hold up hold, hold them 126. They need to get that. That's what they have at 26 percent. So they need to know how that interest works. They need to understand that they need that credit card for emergencies because they're once again young lady traveling to Berkeley, car broke, middle of the night. She needed a hotel room to get a car fixed the next day. She didn't have a credit card. Okay, so they're not bad, they just need to know how to use them. And there's websites on here how to establish good credit and talk to your students so you don't look like this guy. I mean, that was me, honestly, at one point in time. Just cash flowing. You know, throwing out of there, you know, I was making good money, <laughs> but I wasn't keeping any. You know what I'm saying? So we want to make sure the kids understand how that works right from the beginning. There's good, but there are lots of good websites to talk about that. So we're going to go a little quicker, finding your path, uh, resources to find your college. The best way to choose a good college is to go on as many college tours as you can as many college tours as you can. Young lady was a scholar, family from scholars, all that going to UCLA, she signed up for UCLA, did not like UCLA, okay. She just happened to be very religious, would rather be in it more, she was very shy. They told her about LMU, and she went over to LMU and she saw like 18 kids in class, instead of like a theater, well that's for me. She moved to LMU and she excelled. 
you got to change your school. And once again, I'm, I'm should be talking about this about this issue. And I love this issue. I'm an alum. My wife's an alum. My son's an alum. So don't get me wrong. My point is that choose your school. Go to all you know, not all but go to five or six different campuses. You know, and see the CSU which one is the right one for you because they have different things that they major in or you know, different majors that are perfect for you and different, different environments. You know, I went to Long Beach. My wife went to Long Beach. My son went to Northridge. Right, so find the right school for you. Tips for getting into college. Here's what we're talking about all the public universities, the Cal State, the UCs, and the community colleges. Something I just learned today that um, with a 2.5 GPA and 30 credits with the community colleges, if you have, if your son or daughter is going to be transferring from the community college to somewhere, they can also transfer to the HBCUs with 30 credits and 2.5 GPA. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, so yes, that's something that you can look out for. There's options for you babies, okay? Once again, we want them to go directly from the Cal State, I mean, for the CSU or the community college of Cal States or the UCs, but there are options for them to take advantage of all the options. That's just my point. Oh, down here at the bottom, on the same page, is where we start talking about, you know, Common App, the HBCUs, you know, the Hispanic universities, Jesuit universities, private colleges, there are options for your mates. All right, that's what I want you to know. Okay, we'll keep going. Uh, the California Community College System, excellent resource. Um, one thing I'll talk about if you're going to transfer, you definitely need to know about the ASSIST website. Okay, there is another, oh, oh, actually, something I didn't miss, I will go back to is this is new to, I'm trying to stay on schedule here. Hopefully the site is back up because they are updating the site last time I checked it and okay, they moved this the page. So what's behind this here? Long story short, the, uh, the community colleges chose 15 campuses and said each of you 15 campuses are going to be allowed to offer one bachelor's degree program. West Angeles, we're going to give you nursing. You know, Southwest, you're going to do aeronautics. Okay, but these 15 campuses were all given options to do this. Okay? The program was very successful, I learned, and they're talking about expanding this program. So what that means is that it's not going to mean a huge amount of us because there's still expenses of running a graduate degree program. But it can be a little bit less, and that fights off the impact of those Cal State schools that don't have space for your kids. They don't have to transfer. They can stay on this campus. If they know that nursing is what they want to do, they can get their bachelor degree on the West Angeles campus. Make sense? Okay, so cool, check that out. And as a matter of fact, the, the site, I know that they're updating it because they've been saying it every year, so uh, for a while. So check that out, but great, great program, the bachelor's degree program is available from the community colleges. Uh, transferring it there, Cal State, once again, 23 wonderful campuses, you know, the Cal State Apply button, eligibility, early start program, early assessment program. They wiped out those remedial classes now. Okay, so your student will get onto the campus, start earning courses, earning credits immediately, but they may be asked to go through the early start program to get their skills right. Okay, so just understand that they will start earning credits immediately because we had students taking six, seven, eight years. So then what did they get that they want to work around that and they have this early start program, which is a wonderful, wonderful program. But also this early assessment program, 11th graders, get them tested, see how they're doing, are they on track? Do they have Cal State level skills? Okay, learn that early so that you don't get to 12th grade and you're thinking that they're on track and they're not. All right, so a couple of things for the Cal State there. Um, are you eligible? We have that here. The UC system, one quick thing, we'll talk about the personal insight questions now. It used to be personal statements back in our day. Now the personal insight questions, there are eight questions. You choose four and write a 350 word essay, if you will. They want to know, what makes you special? Why should you be chosen of all these kids? We got great kids here, okay? What makes you stand out? Talk to them about something personal. They don't just want you to be a robot and give them the basics. They want you to give them personal stories. There was a young lady who said that she was dreading the fact that she had to spend the weekend with her, her mom and grandma in the kitchen because they had family coming over. And she was a young Latina. And she decided, uh, or then after doing it, being forced to do it, she learned about the entire family history. And so now she's going to be a double major, business and Latino, uh, uh, Hispanic studies. 
because she wants to go back and work with her community. You see where I'm going with that? So she's not just a little bit about who I am and I did great and so forth, but how are you going to really affect your community? Why should we choose you over someone else? That's what I found in these, that they're talking about in those personal, uh, personal insight questions. How to be eligible, the independent colleges, once again, the USC's and the, the you know, the, the uh, uh, LMU's and all those different colleges, some great colleges out there, sometimes a little more expensive, typically a little less uh, smaller class sizes, a little more attention I've heard in some cases. So if that's the right choice, Western undergraduate exchange. Western undergraduate exchange, 15 Western states got together and said, you know, we need to give these California kids some options because there's way too many kids trying to get to California. So the 15 states said, instead of there being double the amount of the tuition for being out of state students coming into Oregon, you know, Nevada, and so on, we said, no, but instead of making it twice as amount, we're making one and a half times the amount. So there's a very good chance that you can go to one of those states and to one of those schools and still pay the similar cost of what you would do in California, even though you're out of state. And give your kids an option, you get a wonderful option. Great. And if you can go to the University of New Mexico for maybe the cost of the Cal States. You know, or definitely. So, am, am I right, Nathan? Yeah, absolutely. So, once again, options. Options, okay, that we want to make sure are available. So, take a look at that Western undergraduate exchange, all 15 of the Western states studying abroad. I actually had students that have done that too. Um, apprenticeships, we're now talking very quickly about uh, talking about uh, my son. Dad, I don't even know if I want to go to college. I want to just go to work. Well, <laughs> that's the only family, right? Okay, man. All right. So I'll tell you what. We're going to have to figure out what the best option for you is. Because I still think college is a good option. And he did go to college, actually. So good option. But we looked at So where are this a good options for you? Because that's going to happen in your families. You know, I don't know. Can I want to go straight to work? Okay, well, cool. What are your options? Apprenticeships. There are hundreds of apprenticeships out there, and they pay good cash. Very well. I had a friend who was a, a DCAC, the uh, uh, HVAC. HVAC. Yeah. He said, no, you don't understand. I'm not talking about equipment in your house. I can build it. Okay. I had another friend who built roads, and he said, I started talking to kids about construction, and I'm like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about you know, building a house. I'm talking about I build freeways. And my kids are up to 19, 20 miles an hour. You know, my manager's making $55 an hour after being with me for five, six years, you know? So wonderful options, apprenticeships for those students who want to do career work. My mentor, Ken Aldridge, was a uh, person who founded 11 major businesses. He created behind this button here, the Dream Toolbox. This is Ken right here. Ken, before he passed away last year, he asked me here, I want this to be shared with as many kids as possible. I want them not to know how to build a spreadsheet. They, they can get that anywhere. But they need to build an entrepreneurial mind to think like an entrepreneur. Whether they're a doctor, lawyer, CPA, janitor, whatever it is, to think like an entrepreneur, to have, to have that kind of spirit. Because if you're a janitor, why not have five janitorial services? You, you feel me? Okay, so how to have an entrepreneurial mind. And he had 21 podcasts. I turned them into 21 videos for him. All 21 are right here for free. All right. And you can go through them. They're four minutes long. Very quick and easy. We do classes on this whole thing. Dream Toolbox, wonderful resources if you want your students or if your students want to be an entrepreneur. I love that there. Private career and technical schools. This gentleman here paid for me to go back to college to learn the web designers to create the website you're seeing today. Last year. I'm 57 years old. You feel me? So we always keep learning. So private career and technical schools, some great jobs out there in the tech world. They're, they're great, some wonderful things, but you need to just have access to them. And walk you through with, with your students so they know they have options available. We'll keep going. Uh, US military, ROP, let's see here. Oh, career planning. We'll talk about a little bit of career planning, a little faster tools for your first job, resumes and cover letters are on this page. Preparing for the interview, and I'll just show you one thing at the bottom. It's preparing for the interview. Talks about keeping calm and all like that. But two things that I want you to learn about is dressing appropriately. Well, actually, no, three things. Two things. Uh, social media. All right? Social media 
is the first thing that the admissions person for college or your employer is going to look at. Period. Students need to get that. If there's something on there that they don't think that you and grandma and grandpa and the whole family are perfectly cool with seeing, then they need to get it off of that. And students say, well, what's the big deal? I say, because you're representing that college. It's like if I had a big AT&T thing or if I had someone out doing work for me with Educate California on the site, I would, yes, look at their website because I just want to make sure that our values are somewhat the same. You see what I'm saying? That's what the social media area we're living in. So make sure that their social media is intact. Number two, a good email address. If you have an email address that has your nickname and people don't know who you are, you don't want to do that when you apply for a job or apply for college. Best thing is I always tell students have two. Have the one that you use with your friends, and then you have a business email, eric.more at gmail. I mean, something basic, so that the person reading your application doesn't have to try to figure out, you know, I had a good friend of mine, and he's passed, and one of my best friends, he was a chef, and he called himself Chef Daddy. Okay, so he's sending out resumes with Chef Daddy, you know. No, 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 no. Dale, that your name's Dale, okay, so put that on the name. But very important to have a good email, a professional email, and their fun email. That's fine to have your fun email, you should use them for the right settings, and to check that social media because that is something that people are going to look at. Very important. Okay, to my next. We want to know the students have their rights as an employee. And I'll just tell you a quick funny story. Um, some of y'all look like you're similar to my age. How many of y'all remember uh, Fedco? All right, y'all remember Fedco. Okay, so behind Fedco, there used to be a chemical plant. 16 years old, little Eric got his second job driving a forklift in a chemical plant with nitroglycerin. Came home one day, my hands are peeling because I've been touching them raw and I could listen. And that was my last day of work because my mom almost like a little blood vessel. But before that, there was another store that I worked My first job, I remember, you know, remember Zodis. Yeah, I remember Zodis. We're, we're home people with now, okay? So, Christmas job. Um, didn't realize it, you know, Christmas job means that you get hired on a certain day, you get fired on a certain day. It's period. That's how it works. That's just how it works, okay? But my mom knew that. She told me that. I said, no, no, I did really good. So I'm going to go up and convince them to keep me up there. So I get up there trying to schmooze my man. You know, it wasn't working. So, all right, cool. So I came on home. My mom said, you know, how'd it go? I said, no, it didn't work. You were right. So it's no big deal. Go ahead and have some fun. You got to check. Have some fun this weekend. You're looking for another job. I said, no, they didn't even check. They told me they'd send it to me in a couple weeks. And so, but they told me they would call me back. And she said, well, hold on, mom. The state of California says, and this is what she did for my mom. State of California says that the day that you leave one of those Christmas jobs, you can leave with a check in your hand. Go back and get your check. I said, Mom, just go back and get this. Yes, ma'am. I walk in, Mr. Mova, my mom told me, yeah, you're right, Mom said. He goes in his office, looks through a stack of checks, and gives me my check. Eric is mad now because Eric didn't know his rights. Okay. 16 years old, most students don't, but it's all right here. All right. So we use this resource. Walk through it with them. They need to know the rights. I should have never been put in a situation where I had microcosm on my hands. Or I just I should have never had to done that. I don't know our rights. They're all it's all in here. This is the giant database of resources. This is what we're talking about. We're getting to the last part: the role of diet and exercise and sleep. At the bottom, we also talk about you know mental health. There's a youth crisis line. If your students need someone to talk to, it's right here. It's absolutely free, completely anonymous. And I know these folks. These are one of my partners, so I, I know them very, very well. Uh, tips for young women make, and young men is at the bottom to make sure they're eating right, safe driving, testing and driving, internet safety. On this page, if you have young students, the internet safety page, there is a link down here that you must see about 17 tips to help parents keep their students safe. There are codes that they use in their phones that you have no clue about. I mean, they have a whole language of things that they can do with their cell phone that we as parents don't even know. And it's all on that page, so I'm, I'm giving them up at this point, okay? So take a look at this. This is a brief thing if you have young kids or you know someone with young kids. Take a look at that page because it will help you with your with the kids' safety as far as the internet. Safe, uh, smart serving, cyberbullying, how to you know, spot that and so forth, online annoyances, very, very important here. And then on the last page is talking about diversity, equity, inclusion. So a good way for you to have a conversation with your students. I'm not even in the book, as a matter of fact, so I added that. Uh, but diversity, equity, inclusion, how to have a conversation about what that means. 
how important it is for students going forward. And then at the bottom, we talk about social skills and so forth. How to strong social skills. All right? So that is it for that portion. Very quickly, I'm just going to show you just these last bits here. The homework help site is not a track. Yes. OK. So on homework help site, first 10 years, this is all I did. Working with homework help site, the deacon can tell you that we had a CD that we used to distribute to parents. Okay, but these homework help sites we got them categorized K through eight, language, uh, language arts, math, research, science, and social studies. Under the social studies, I love that. That's my favorite. That had the history of all cultures. We want students to be broad thinking, learn about the history of the Latino cultures, the Hispanic cultures, the Asian cultures, Hmong. Jewish, all the different cultures, they can take a trip around the world on different websites here to see all the different cultures. Science and technology is biology, chemistry, I mean, all the different things. When I typically go through a longer uh, workshop, we, uh, I do about 20 or 25 of them. I have all of them on the first page, 25 favorites, it's right on the first page. I'll just show you about two or three real quickly. A plus research and writing. This website was created because students' writing skills are not up to par in some cases when they get to college. So they have a step-by-step -step guide that walks them through in six steps how to write a research level paper at the college level. Okay, great website for students to help them write a good research paper there. Uh, let's see what else here. Uh, Bill and I, the science guy. We, oh, this one we're going to tell you. Bureau of Labor and Statistics. So really quickly. Instead of asking what do you want to be, it starts with what do you like to do, okay? I was working, doing another workshop, this young lady said she wanted to be a doctor. I clicked on healthcare, and as I was scrolling down, I accidentally clicked on pharmacists. I said, oh, well, I'm sorry, I went to the machine. Well, wait a minute, does that say 128,000 now? I said, yeah, and I didn't know she was very young and uh, very shy and like this. So the class started laughing and so forth because he never heard her talk. But come to find out, she said to me, the truth was more is that my family are a family of doctors. I never wanted to be a doctor, but I was heading towards being a doctor. But if I get the same degree and make that kind of money, they'll be perfectly happy. And it was serious, okay, I was like, wow. And I said, okay, well, that's cool. And she said, yeah, I'm gonna go back to this site as soon as I get home, because I wanna look at this, because it talks about what's the day in the life of, and how much kind of money, is this a, you know, a career that's going up or going down? You know, and all these things, you can go through all these different things and let your kids choose what do they like and then choose what kind of career they want to have in order to make, and then choose what kind of college fits that need. Yes, Dean? Find the right college for the career that you're trying to get, but learn what you want to do first. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, we only have two minutes, so I'm not going to shut down. Okay, a um, couple of things I'll show you very quickly. Um, your parents' rights. CIA World Factbook, if you want to do research on any country in the world, you can do that there. Uh, Great Women in History, one of my favorite websites. The History of the Holidays, so why, why do we sell it on certain days? All right, well, that's all under there. History of money, learning styles, middle class culture, how to avoid being kicked out of school by doing plagiarism. There's a whole tutorial that's written by students. Purple math for algebra. Reprint is 2,000 classic books digitized for free. Grapes of Wrath, Old Man of the Sea, you know, you know, all those good things. They're right there. You can start at chapter one, read them. You can even have the right program and it'll read it to you. Okay? Just good, good stuff. U.S. Census, and I'll close on this one. Population clock. So, how many people do we have in the United States and how many of them are on the, on the 405 right now? So, 7.9 billion people in the entire world. The U.S. population clock actually used to move faster before COVID. Because of the deaths that we had, it actually slowed down. It's starting to move a little bit faster. But yes, once again, great, great resources for your student to make sure that they can be all set. One last one, the writing process. If you want to be a writer, if your kids want to be a writer, the OWL. When it comes to that OWL, you're in the right place. That's Purdue Writing University. That's one of the best in the country. And they technical writing, fiction writing, story writing, any kind of writing, that's where you go to be a writer. And with that, I will close oh, oh, one last thing. The foster care students. We talked about the scholarship right? For every one of the levels, foster, homeless, probation, and so forth, it starts with where you're right. And in this case, for foster, we have actually two pages which are right. 
and then we talk about resources. So in this case, with foster care, probation, and all those students, there are special programs on the campuses of the UC, the Cal State, and the community college. So you, if you decide you want to go to CSU Dominguez, Guardian Scholars is there, and I don't want you trying to search for it. I just gave you a link so you can land on. Okay. So the same thing for probation, foster, homeless, and so forth. They have resources for each one of them, and that's how each one of these sections go. Where we go through the rights, and then we go through where your resources, and then we just add a bunch of good stuff that'll make sure that those students are on track to get everything they need, like major page here, all the phone numbers that they'll, they'll need to be successful while they're in high school and college. Okay. So, yes. Before they talk about tonight, and by the way, thank you so much for the wonderful information. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. And everything that you were talking about tonight is on this website, Life Prep Academy. Yes, it is. Everything is on this website. What we're going to do is, if you fill out your survey, then I will have your first, last name, and your email address. I will already have the information I need to set up your accounts, and I will set those accounts up over the weekend. Okay. Actually, I may even have a chance to do them tomorrow. But if you don't do that survey, I can't do it. Then I'm going to have to track the beacon down. He's going to have to try to get your information. And I, I know he has all your information, but please, please, please fill out that survey so that I know that's the bar, that's the QR code thing. You can scan that or go to the, the Bitly website. But that way I know, hopefully this is a good information. Oh, one last quick thing, I'll show you this. So this is what, okay, cool. So there is a dashboard that the Deacon is going to have with all of you guys and with all your students. And it's where you can track, we track all the different students and we can see how many sessions they've taken. There are sessions that we're going to start offering, okay. So it has just this is the orientation. It starts with the orientation. Kind of like I'll show you what the sessions are. So the sessions are the orientation, like we did here. Then we have a whole one-hour conversation about the first page, about those study habits, you know, procrastination. We have a whole session on that entrance exams, and here are the different eleven sessions we have at Life Club Academy: financial literacy, discovering your interests, and so forth. Then the Dream Toolbox. There are six sessions of the Dream Toolbox. That we and there's, once again, we break up those 21 videos into six different sessions. And we talk about those at an hour of time. And then I just recently started with the contract working with the County of Los Angeles to work with 18 through 24 year olds on financial literacy and entrepreneurship. So we are going to be offering with them banking, budgeting, retirement accounts, credits, home ownership, you know, how to buy your first car, should you buy or lease your car, you know, having, you know, homeowners insurance or, you know, renters insurance, you know, so we'll be talking to those 18 through 24 about their uh, their finances and so forth also. So we're going to make those resources available to you guys and the people will have all that information available. But I hope this has been good. Is this been good? Yes. Cool. Deacon, I'm done. All right, appreciate it. Appreciate you, Brother Eric. Most of this was just to point out to you there is this resource. I'm really pleased with the turnout. Uh, he will get you all those codes. Uh, to make sure you can go on the site. I think the kind of parents that are here, and I'm looking around this room, this is like, a, oh yeah, we got like an all-star team in here. Probably the top two, three percent of my parents in here. Y'all know y'all bad. Uh, anyway, uh, I feel like when he comes, my top three and four percent get this stuff, what happens is that it gives me the time to work with those who won't come to this, and I need to lead through the college process. It kind of made it more likely I can get it done. That's why I think it's important what he's doing. And I really appreciate you, Brother Eric, so very, very much. Give him one more hand, please. <laughs> he mentioned about touring. We are offering the tours at your alma mater, CSU Long Beach, on this Monday. I only have 15 spots. Go home and look at the email. Go ahead and RSVP if you want your youth to go on that trip. Uh, we're, willing, we're really excited about it. They've offered a special tour just for our students. If you want to visit the issue Long Beach, uh, please do that right away. All right? Thank you all for coming. If you don't mind, I'd like to say a benediction before you leave. You may rise. And uh, once again, I appreciate you coming out. Uh, we give a shout out to Brother Daryl. 
I won't tell you why. He knows why I'm giving him a shout out. My guy, praise the Lord. I appreciate men like him. We need more men like Brother Darrell. I don't even say why. He's such a humble man. I wouldn't want me to. We appreciate all of you, though, for coming out on tonight. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless Brother Eric in his, uh, in his enterprise, also in his enrichment ability over the community. Bless everywhere he goes, Lord. Bless us going out and coming in, Lord. Bless these parents, oh God, that have set aside the time to give some love and care for their students. Bless them in a special way, Lord, for their, for their faithfulness on the night. Bless us now as we leave this place. Protect us and keep us from hurt, harm, and danger. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Amen. Thank you all very much. Now, the video, the video will be available in three days. Make sure you all get it first, and then we'll give it to everyone else later.